In this video, we want to continue building out our shipping dashboard for our e-commerce app with Django and Python. Hey guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com, and in the last video, we started building out our shipping dashboard, and we have just a high-level shipping dashboard for both shipped items and not shipped items. In this video, we want to expand that and make each item clickable and then go to their own page that has all the information for that specific item. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce series. So check that out if you haven't so far. And if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we created these shipping dashboards. We have unshipped and shipped, and we can toggle between them in our menu here. Now we want to be able to click on the orders and go to a separate page that has just the information from that order. And we also want the ability to toggle back and forth whether or not it's been shipped or not. So if we want to ship an item, we can click a button that says shipped. It'll mark it as shipped. So we need to build out some pages that we can click on and uh, open up a page. So let's head over to our urls.py file in our payments directory. I'm just going to write this out. Let's go path. We want to point this. Let's call this orders. And we need to also pass the primary key. So int integer primary key of the order number, right? So each order has a number. They're listed right here. So order one, two, three, four, five. Um, we can go here and order six and seven. We need to pass this number when we click the link. And we'll account for that with this little guy right here. And we want to point this to what? Views dot, uh, let's call this orders. And let's give this a name of order. Okay, piece of cake there. So now let's head over to our templates payments slash, let's do not shipped first. And right here, let's create a link. So let's go a href equals, and let me just go ahead and close that link. And we wanna point this to a Django URL tag, and we wanna point this to orders. But we also want to pass the item.id. So let me copy this whole thing. Save this. This is our not shipped. Let's also open up our shipped and do the same thing for it. So I'll pop that in there and close our tag there. Okay, so go ahead and save this. Now let's very quickly head over to reviews.py file and let's define orders. And we want to pass in a request. And for now, let's just pass. I want to just look real quick. And see, yes, we get a link here. When we hover, look at the bottom left-hand corner down here. You can see it's pointing to orders slash six and orders slash seven. So we got that whole number system right. Uh, same thing over here if we hover on one of these. Okay, that looks good. So now let's build out this page real quick. So again, we want to make sure the person is logged in and that they're this super user. Else, let's flash up a message. Let's just pass for now, else we'll send them back to the home page, right? So in here, let's just return render a request, and we want to send this to payment forward slash orders dot HTML. We haven't created that page just yet. We're probably going to want to pass something. So, all right, we'll do that. Now let's create this orders dot HTML page. Come up here to our payments folder, right click new file. I'll save this as orders.html. And let's just, let's see, let's copy this whole page of our shipping dash and pop that in there. Uh, we don't want any of this table stuff. So now inside of here, head back to our views.py file, we need to pass in whatever specific order we're dealing with here. So anytime we click on a thing, if we click on one, we're passing order number one, we can look up that one in our database, in our table, and pull it out and you know put it back on the page. So let's get the order. And to do that, let's create a variable called order. And this is going to be order dot objects dot get. And we want to set the ID equal to the primary key. Now we're also going to need to pass in that primary key in the request. And that'll come straight from the URL. Right? So okay. So we've got our order. We also need to get the order items, the things in the, the order, right? So 
We have an order and our order items. The order is the overall order. The order items are the things in the order, right? The items, the number, the books and the titles and all that stuff. So let's just call this items. And this is going to be order item dot objects dot filter. We want to filter by the order with whatever primary key, right? So, okay. So now let's pass in both of those things. So we've got our order colon order and we've got our item items colon items. Okay. So let's go ahead and save this and let's head back over here to our orders page. And right here, let's just paste out order and let's also paste out items just to see if this is all working. So now we can head back over here. Let's hit reload. Uh, let's go order number two. And here we see order number two and the query set with no items. That doesn't look great. Uh, let's see. Uh, that doesn't look great either. What did we do here? Um, let's see. Now yeah, we're importing that dot objects dot filter. Uh, items, items. Okay, that looks fine. But this is a query set, so we're going to have to loop through it. I just hoped it would put something a little more interesting out on the screen. So, okay, what do we want on this screen? I think let's create a little card that has all of our stuff. So I'm going to head over to getbootstrap.com, click on the docs, and let's go down to components and then card. And I'm going to scroll around until I see something that I like. Uh, let's grab this one right here. I think that's nice. So I'm going to copy that to clipboard, head back over here and go to our orders.html. And instead of all of this, let's just pop in that card. Let me go ahead and save this and just see what we got here. All right, that looks somewhat nice. Good enough. Underneath this, let's put some line breaks. So here in the card header, let's put the order.id and let's say order and then a space. And let's also put the amount of the order. So here that's gonna be the order dot amount underscore paid. Save that, take a look at that. Order three, 2198, oh, okay. Now inside of here, we wanna put the information from the order. And we don't want this button for now, so we'll take that out as well. Uh, actually, let's copy this and put it underneath and have this point to the Django URL tag of, I don't know, let's send it home, <laughs> wherever. Uh, let's, yeah, let's take it out. Who cares? So, okay, inside of here, what do we want? Well, let's get rid of all of this stuff. And we probably want, what, the email of the user. We probably want the date shipped, if it has been shipped, right? Or the date ordered. So we're gonna have to do some logic here. And then we probably want the full name and the shipping address, something like that. And then we also probably want the items. So the email, that's just gonna be what our order dot email. Let's put a line break. And then now we need some logic here. So let's say if, order dot date underscore shipped. That means that there was a date shipped. Then let's do that. Else we've got a date ordered and we want to end our if. And for here, our date shipped is gonna be what? Order dot date underscore shipped. And the date ordered is gonna be order dot date underscore ordered. And I'm pulling these tags right out of the model. We've done this many times. Okay, so full name. Do we want to say full name here? Let's just put the name. So let's go order dot full underscore name. Line break there. And for the shipping address, same deal. Let's just put the actual shipping address. That's going to be order dot shipping underscore address. And let's put a line break there. So let's save this and see if we mess that up before we get into the items. Okay, so email josh at josh.com, date ordered, josh elder, 
And here we go. Now this is all kind of one line, the address, city, state, and zip, and country. Um, maybe you like that. I don't love that. So let's let's put all of this in a pre-tag because remember our shipping address is a text box with formatting with items on each line. So we can put that formatting in with a pre-tag. So if we come back here and hit reload, oh boy. That one doesn't look great for some reason. Let's go back to our unshipped orders and try number four. Uh, we're getting weird stuff there, but that's just because we must have typed it in wrong with weird formatting or something. I don't know. Maybe we'll mess with that later. It does look weird. But for now, good enough, right? So um, let's put some line breaks here as well. I don't know. Just playing around. Okay, we'll. We'll deal with this weirdness here in a bit. Oh, I know what's going on. Uh, it's because of this. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I don't know. Maybe you like it that way. You can format this any way you want. So, okay, now let's do our items. So maybe we don't need that line break. And maybe we don't need that items. So we need to loop through here. So we need a for loop. So let's go for item in items. And right away, I always want to end my four, just so I don't forget. Now inside of here, we can pop out the item. So let's go item dot product. And let's also put the number of them. So let's go item dot quantity. And also let's go item dot price. And I'm just gonna kind of smush these out all in one line because I don't know, I'm getting lazy here. Okay, let's go ahead and save this and see if that worked. Okay, and we got two books here. Well, three actually, two Ruby programming books and one PHP programming book. So, okay, not too bad. I was going to have a button on here that toggles to ship on and off. Uh, this video is getting a little bit long. I think we're going to push that to the next video. Uh, but we are moving right along. So now, so we have our dashboard here and we can click on these, go to a different page. Now, this is obviously pretty janky. I mean, you're going to want to style this in any number of different ways. I just wanted to show you how to create the page and get the information on there. Like I said, you can style it at however you want. I mean, this looks okay, but you know, it's not great. That's how you create the actual pages using these order numbers. Fairly simple. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 200,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.